All right, now it's time to talk about treatment options. The options out there are essentially threefold. You have topicals, pellets, and injections. So with topicals, this is any cream, gel, or patch that allows medication to be absorbed across the skin and into your system. Pellets are compounded medications that are put into your skin underneath, actually, with a trocar, a minor surgical procedure that allows those pellets to dissolve over time. And then injections. Injections are typically given deeply into the muscle and also dissolve over time. So there are pros and cons to each approach. Uh, at Testosterone Centers of Texas, we do use both topicals and injections. We heavily recommend injections over the other options, and we recommend against pellets. And so we'll talk about a little bit about why here. So if we go back to our ranges of normal, and we realize that total testosterone is normal between 350 and 1197 or 1200 roughly, uh, and then we further look at the fact that we're wanting to stay in the mid range of normal between roughly 500 and 1000, then you get an idea of where we're wanting to keep our patients over the long term. For our discussion, we're going to assume a patient has a number that's low, so below 348 nanograms per deciliter. This is something that, uh, of course, is confirmed, like we talked about, through medical history, through symptoms, as well as laboratory results. If we want to move from here into this normal range, and it's recommended by the Endocrine Society that you maintain levels in the mid-normal range, then we have three options to look at. With topicals, it's important to know that up to 40% of people per the studies, don't absorb enough of that medication to make a difference for them at all. Many of those people on topicals will, who do absorb medication will end up with levels that are here in the lower register of normal. So these people may or may not actually have improvement on their medication, but you're still going to have the risks of therapy. The good parts about topicals is you are applying these yourself, so you don't have to come into the clinic quite as often for that. Some of the downsides are the fact that the medications are really expensive. Rarely do insurance plans cover them, and if it's something that's sitting on your skin waiting to absorb into your body, it's something that can come off on somebody else who doesn't need extra testosterone. Thank your wife or your kids. So again, topical therapy is an option, and again, that's a cream, a gel, a patch. But this is a response that we typically see. We have many men that come to us that have been on therapy through creams or gels and just never really felt much better or didn't feel good enough to warrant the cost of therapy. Now pellets, this is one that we do not recommend. And the reason we don't is because basically they don't live up to their promises. Uh, pellets, if they were able to deliver on what they said they did, they'd actually be the best therapy out there in my opinion. Um, they claim to be all natural. What really happens is they start with a plant sterol. So that plant sterol is then, uh, even though it's a plant source, is manipulated in a lab to be something that is usable in pharmaceuticals. That pharmaceutical powder is then sent off to a compounding pharmacy. And it's not just one. They use different ones depending on your geographic location. And then they'll compound a medication that will be designed to dissolve in your body. But there's no time gradient on those pellets. So it's not one's an extended release and one's an immediate release. In other words, they'll tell you that these treatments will last six months, but they don't put a one-month pellet and a two-month pellet and a three-month pellet in you. They put all the same pellet. And they'll, for men, they'll put up to usually 12 pellets at one time, and all 12 pellets start dissolving immediately. So what we see time and time again is that you end up having a high level for the first month, but then as those pellets have dissolved or started their dissolution, then you have this plummet over the next three to four months that usually lands you here by the time that you need to be re-implanted. So you don't get that six months that they'll tell you often that you'll get. You get a three to four month window where at the end of which technically you are normal, but you're barely normal. And so it's important to note the reason we stay here and here is for two reasons. If you're below a certain level and still normal, you still have symptoms. And those symptoms are going to get worse the further you go down. If you're at the top edge of normal, you start to invite more risk. And those risks tend to get worse the higher you go. 
So all this area under the curve that you have with pellets over that first month is when you're at highest risk. And there's not a, there aren't a lot of practices that are doing a lot of monitoring during this time. So their patients are at higher risk, and then within the four or five weeks later, their numbers start to plummet. So they go on this huge roller coaster rise to be barely normal at the end of three to four months when reimplantation is necessary. Pellets are not FDA approved. They're typically not covered by insurance. And with the, the fact that it exposes you to so much risk that you don't need, that is why we recommend against using pellet therapy. With injections, I have the opportunity to use something that almost overnight takes a low number and puts you into the normal range. So when testosterone replacement therapy is being done right, I'm not waiting for your numbers to come up. I'm waiting for your body to respond. If you remember back, we were talking about the difference between total and free testosterone. I need to make enough free testosterone that is available for your body's processes to utilize. And that is where treatment comes in. So with an injection, for 48 hours, your numbers will go up. By day eight, however, half of that medicine will be gone. That's the half-life of the medication, and I'm not able to change that, nor is anybody else. Uh, at current time, this is the best injectable medication we have available in the United States. So because of this fact, this is why we come in on day seven, give another injection, and repeat this process. Now, this becomes a repeatable pattern week after week, and even though there is movement here, because it's in this mid-normal range and we're not going super high exposing you to risk, not letting you dip so low that you start experiencing symptoms again, we have an even response and thereby improvement in symptoms when we maintain this mid-normal range. I say that when people are here, they're both healthy and happy. You can sometimes get some of the androgenic effects of testosterone that increase the higher you go. Now keep in mind bodybuilders who abuse testosterone, they're taking doses that are 15 times what we would ever use. They don't even land on this chart. Uh, but you get an idea of why we feel that injections do a better job of maintaining that mid-normal range. You're not in the cusp of normal here with, like you would be often with, uh, with topicals, gels, and creams. You're not going crazy high and then crazy low over the course of three or four months as you would with pellets. We're using the lowest effective dose to get the right levels and limit your risk and symptoms. So in a nutshell, those are your treatment options. Certainly there are more ins and outs and pros and cons. Um, when you're talking about injections, there is a burden of therapy that if you're coming into the clinic once per week to get injections, that can be an impact to your schedule. We do our best to keep that very streamlined while we offer the opportunity to talk with our providers at every visit. It's something that if we're not drawing your blood or going over your results or answering any questions you may have, the injection itself is very quick and efficient, so you're in and out with little impact to your day, but a great impact to your quality of life. Maintaining these numbers in this range while mitigating side effects, which we'll talk about here next, is really what this is all about. I want to improve your quality of life, make sure we're doing it safely, and we believe that weekly injections is the best way to make that happen. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.